Hello again and welcome to another lesson. This time I'm going to give you a couple of hints regarding the playback of repeat bars. And you'll see here that I have an example of a repeated passage open. And as it currently is, Sibelius will repeat this passage just as it's marked in the score now. However, what if I want to do something a little bit more complicated? What if instead of just repeating this figure twice, I wanted to repeat it multiple times? In the Play tab, there's a button called Repeats. And if we click this, you can see that it's usually set by default to automatically repeat repeat bar lines. But you can see that up the top, we also have the option to turn this off completely if we want to, so that Sibelius won't play any of our repeats. But down the bottom of this window is where things get really exciting, when we click on Manual Repeats Playback, because here we can manually set exactly how many repeats Sibelius should play. And we do this by simply typing in the bars that we want Sibelius to play. So in my example, I first type in 1-2, meaning I want Sibelius to play bars 1-2, to two, followed by a comma, which then tells the program we want to go to the next cell. And then I'm going to type in 3-4 comma, and then repeat that several times. So 3-4 comma, 3-4 comma, etc, etc. And then eventually followed by 5-100. So what I've just told Sibelius is that it should play bars 1 and 2, and then repeat bars 3 to 4, about eight times, and then to play bars 5 to 100. Now, this piece is a lot shorter than 100 bars, but the reason I've typed in 100 is just to make sure that it plays through to the end of the piece. So if I now play that, You can see that it's repeating bars three and four more than twice, and it'll continue to do this eight times in total before it moves on to bar five. Now what's really crazy about this repeat function is that we can set any playback order that we want. For example, if I type in six, comma, five, comma, two, comma, one, comma, three, comma, four, and then let that play back. You can see that the playback literally skips around from bar to bar in the order that I've assigned. So it's quite a powerful little tool. The only disadvantage though is that if I want to add or subtract a bar somewhere in my score, I'm going to mess up the order of playback and I'm going to have to re-input the bars that I want repeated. But what is again really fantastic is that in the repeats window, I can just reset everything by clicking restore default order. But what if we want to get a little bit more complicated and introduce tacits into our repeated material? So let's say that as before, my repeat bars are being repeated many, many times. But let's say that I don't want every instrument playing all of the time for each repeat. For example, let's say that I want the top voice to play the first and third time but not the second and fourth time. And I want the second voice to do the opposite. So what I'm going to have to do is I first select the top voice, and then I have to go to the inspector window. And in the inspector window, under playback, you'll see play on pass. And all of these checkboxes listed from one to eight. And I don't want this part to play on the second and fourth pass, so I'm just going to uncheck those boxes. And on the second part, I don't want it to play on the first and third pass, so I just have to uncheck the first and third checkboxes. So if I now then play that for you. And you can see that those parts are now alternating just as I've specified in the inspector window. So this little feature is really useful, particularly for jazz repertoire, where you have a lot of repeats over the solo sections with different backing combinations from the ensemble in the background. So that's it for this lesson. I hope you have fun checking this out, and I'll catch you in the next one.